This live broadcast is brought to you by Stay tuned as ITV takes you to the heart of Hajj in this special live broadcast from Saudi Arabia. Of the three million people congregate and move in exactly the same places at exactly the same time without a problem. Alhamdulillah. Um, of course, as you can see here on the scene from behind me, it's the area or the the holy area of Mina. We are on the first day of uh, of Eid al-Adha, and we are. Um, I feel the spread side is is alive here yes, the, uh, the process of hajj yes is very very emotional and yes it is it really touches all of us as muslims mm -hmm. the hajj has a series of rituals which have to be performed but hajj is far more deeper than the rituals and what the experience is <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, who is the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May the peace, blessings, and mercy of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you all. Once again, respected viewers, I'm joining you in the studios of ITV for this live coverage about Hajj. My name is Samih Jad, and I'm your host, inshallah, for tonight, and uh, inshallah in the pledge line as well, which will be uh, which will be at half past seven. And before that, also we'll be having some interview with Brother Zainul Abidin Kaji. After a few minutes, inshallah, we'll be speaking uh, about the pledge line, which will be today, uh, tonight, and uh, and before we go to that, we will be uh, having. Uh, uh, crossing over to Mecca al Mukarrama, inshallah, right now for a live feedback. Let's listen to that and watch that, and then we come back to the studio, inshallah. Stay with us. We're broadcasting to you live from Azizia North, Mecca Mukarrama. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the special coverage of Hajj 1435, live from Azizia in Mecca Mukarrama. And I don't think right now, across the globe and through the universe, there's a place busier, filled with more spirituality than the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. As we count down to the day of Arafah, to the Waqt of Wukuf and the days thereafter, as Hujaj prepare themselves for that pinnacle of a journey of a lifetime. Joining me in studio is Yusuf and Fahima, all the way in Azizia North, and they're from North Cliff in Johannesburg. Assalamu alaikum, and welcome to the studios here of ITV. A bit about uh, yourself, uh, tell me about uh, the family uh, setup, and uh, is it your first time that you are here for Hajj? Okay, Alhamdulillah, it's uh, been our first uh, Hajj this year. Uh, it's been really spiritual and truly really uplifting. Uh, it's been a difficult journey to leave my young daughter of 21 months old uh, to undertake the journey. Alhamdulillah, uh, it's been quite a satisfying and spiritual uplifting journey so far. And uh, looking forward to the days of Hajj, the next few days, inshallah. Yusuf, you mentioned your family, and obviously this decision was not something that happened within two or three days. It's something that you prepare for, that you plan for, that you anticipate, you make your near, you make the necessary dua, and Allah opens that door, and that invitation gets sent for you. Take us through your personal journey towards that day when you stepped on the plane at Awar Tambo, and you made your way towards the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's been a very, uh, very stressful as, as well as anxious and um, a, a very uh, wonderful experience at the same time. Uh, looking forward to such an experience um, of fulfilling the, one of the pride of, of Islam and um, undertaking the journey of Hajj. Uh, it just overcame me emotionally to be accepted and be accredited is one of the charge this year, alhamdulillah, uh, since waiting for the past three years to be accredited and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reading on the page each and every day, asking Allah to accept your, yeah. our calling. And uh, what Allah has it, alhamdulillah, uh, it's been uh, beneficial and it's been, we have actually been a guest in a VIP to be blessed with the opportunity to undertake the journey, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Leaving behind a young daughter uh, for any mommy, that's, uh, that's a big task. 
your feelings, your coaching her to tell her that you're not going to be there. Take us through some of that emotion and take us through some of that feelings. You receive your accreditation. Now the ball has to start rolling. Yes. My mother looks after my daughter in any event when I go to work. So I knew that coming here, she'd be in safe hands. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. But even though I knew that the day we left was, an ex was exceptionally emotional for me, I cried my eyes out on the plane, but Alhamdulillah, when we arrived here, I was at peace because I knew the purpose we had come for and my intention is to please Allah and that is my comfort. All the, um, the mechanical things out of the way, so you get off the plane, you get in the bus, you start preparing yourself for that moment where you've done your ikhram, your feelings at that time, your feelings at that time when you know this clothes that I take out now is the clothes that I'm going to be standing on, firstly, uh, at the Kaaba, and secondly, uh, on the day of Arafah. Those emotions, sh share that with us. Uh, it, it's such a beautiful feeling to be donning the Yerkhanam because it signifies um, unity and uniformity, uh, where you rid yourself of all egotistical behaviors and characteristics. Uh, we all come together as an Ummah, as, uh, as Muslim, and shrouding two pieces of cloth, uh, whether you're rich or poor, um, staying in a five-tower hotel or staying in a one-tower hotel, reaching the plain of Arafah and Muzdalifah, we're all united as one ummah, shrouding the exact same clothing. And uh, it's it such a spiritually beautiful experience to be witnessing each and everybody being so humble, being so so at one with Allah, it's truly unbelievable. It's an experience that cannot be described. Alhamdulillah, it's one of those experiences, no matter what words you use, you can never really tell someone what you feel when you see the Kaaba or what you feel when you walk into the Haram and you lift your head and you start your Tawaf and so on. Messages to family out there that, that's watching now, messages to those you left behind yes. as you're on the doorstep of the, the highest point of your life as a Muslim, um, as your, as your, of your life spiritu sp spiritually, um, and also now as a judge. We miss you, and all the du'as you ask us to make, we will certainly make them. You are in our du'as daily. We love you. And our du'a is for our hajj to be accepted, Amen. and we ask everyone back home to make the same du'a for us, Amen. and inshallah, all will go well. Inshallah, we make dua that Allah accepts uh, all our du'as, inshallah, Amen. that Allah accepts our hajj, inshallah, Amen. and that you be granted a hajj makbul and mabrur, and that all of us go home and be beacons of positivity for the deen of Islam, inshallah. Amen. Shukran inshallah. for speaking to us. You, you're watching a broadcast live, that was Yusuf and Fahima uh, from Northcliffe in Johannesburg, and they were talking to us about uh, their Farul Hajj, their journey of Hajj that they uh, undertook here, um, uh, this year, Hajj 1435. Um, and uh, we are broadcasting to you live from the Azizia studios uh, of ITV uh, in Makkah Mukarrama. And uh, next up, we will be joined by a representative of SAU, uh, the South African Hajj and Umrah Council, playing quite a big role, uh, medical uh, personnel uh, on the ground here in Johannesburg. Then also, um, the, administ the administrative things that they are doing, uh, making sure that all South African Hujaj are accounted for coming into the country. They have a crew and people standing by at the airport in Jeddah. They have crew and people standing by at uh, the airports in Medina. Um, and they also have um, a number of people that are going around to buildings on a daily basis, making sure that all who judge know exactly what the layout is, that all the groups know what the layout is. Um, and we are joined by a gentleman that is seasoned in the business of making sure that the pilgrims are comfortable and making sure that uh, every, that, and everyone um, is comfortable with uh, all their duties uh, at Sauk. Assalamu alaikum, Hafiz, and uh, welcome to ITV. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's indeed a pleasure to be here, to be able to hopefully address the concerns that the people have back home as far as the Hujjaj in Saudi Arabia is concerned. Alhamdulillah. Once again, uh, Hajj, uh, all the South Africans have arrived, I, I suppose. It's, it's, uh, is it too late for anyone else still to come? Alhamdulillah, I think 1996 Hajis have come. Four, unfortunately, were returned yesterday from Addis Ababa. 
Unfortunately, at this point in time, we don't know what the reason is, but there is a royal decree that from the 5th of Zil Hajj, no international pilgrims will be allowed into Saudi Arabia. So whether they missed the deadline or not, I can't say. We are trying to see how we can facilitate this move. But at this point in time, I don't know what the, uh, the last happenings are. But 1996 have arrived safely in Saudi Arabia. So uh, 1,996 South African Hujaj has arrived uh, here in uh, the kingdom to perform Hajj. Um, and the bulk of them you see walking around very proudly. Um, a lot of them with uh, their uh, jackets or a bag with South Africa's flag on. Um, I've even seen a few vehicles driving around here in Azizia um, with a South African flag on. So you know that uh, South Africa is well represented here, alhamdulillah. Um, if we can just go step back a few, um, a, a few seconds rather. Um, the Hujaj that has been returned, should they not make it here? Will, will the accreditation be carried over? Um, can they be worried about the fact that they'll be put maybe in the bottom of the list again? What will happen? Well, look, from my perspective, I, I, I don't have very much knowledge as to how this process is going to work because it's the first time around that we've had experience in this particular situation. But I'm sure the administrators back home will look at it and see how they can best facilitate it. At this point in time, like I said, I don't even know what the reasons are that they have been uh, returned. Is it negligence on their part? Is it negligence on the operator's part? Mm -hmm. It is something that has to be investigated, and then it will be for the board to take the decision as to how they're going to facilitate them for the future. Alhamdulillah, we leave it in the hands of Allah. There's yes, a reason for every, absolutely. everything. Absolutely. Let's look at the Hujaj in the kingdom now. Yes. Everyone's accounted for. Uh, what has been the major challenges this year, if there has been any, uh, thus far with Hajj 1435? Well, I must say, in Saudi Arabia in itself, uh, the challenges have been absolutely minimal. After the debacle we had as far as the visa back home is concerned, the issuing of the visas, I think maybe that was the, the test for us for this particular year. Alhamdulillah, so far, I think things have worked out fairly well. The situation has panned out fairly well. We hope and pray that the next few days, which is going to be the crucial part of this particular trip, will pan out just as smooth as the stay of two or six weeks that has taken place so far. The Khujaj generally, take us through some of the assistance that you are requested for. Uh, we know that there's a, a, a crew of medical uh, persons that make sure uh, that the Khujaj are, are, are seen to where their health is concerned. Um, for little niggling issues and so on that they might have. Uh, but there's, there's, there's also a number of other services Sao does provide on the ground. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, initially we are at the airports uh, in Jeddah and Medina. That is the arrival points of the South African uh, Hujaj. I must emphasize at this point in time that the uh, Hajj terminal has been absolutely fantastic this year in opposing to the past years. Our average uh, processing time this year at the Hajj terminal was between four and six hours, which I think was absolutely fantastic, and I can only expect it to get better. So we are there at the Hajj terminal to receive our judge, to sort out the logistics as far as the busing is concerned, depending majority of our pilgrims go by bus to Medina. There are those that go by plane. This year we found even the facilitating of the flights from Hajj terminal was a lot more smoother, uh, a lot more comfortable in the past. We used to have issues where people used to come with tickets and they never used to get onto the flights. This year, I think in that part of it worked out very smoothly. Mm -hmm. In Medina, we have a team also receiving the charge, again, sorting out the logistics, getting them uh, through the uh, procedures of the airport. Mm -hmm. The average time in Medina is between two and two and a half hours before we get them to the hotel. We receive them at the hotel. Eventually, we dispatch them from Medina into Mecca. We have a team receiving them in Mecca. We then obviously, now that everybody is in Azizia, round about the 25th of Zil Hajj, where Zil Qaeda, sorry, not Zil Hajj, 25th of Zil Qaeda, where South Africans start moving from Mecca, we facilitate that movement. And obviously now, the movement into Mina will also be facilitated by Saho. As far as the medical is concerned, we had a team in Medina, we had a team in Mecca, we have a team at this point in time in Azizia to facilitate the primary healthcare needs of the Hujaj. And like I said, overall, uh, it's purely to try and see to the needs of the Hujaj, whether it is from a logistical point of view, whether it is from a health point of view. We have been there, we will be there, and inshallah we will try and see how best we can facilitate the comfort of the Hujaj.
has there been any major incidents involving South Africans? We know there are a lot of things that can happen because of the magnitude of people, uh, the distances people move on a daily basis from Jeddah to Makkah, from Makkah to Medina. People uh, go to the Mikat at Tanim for Umrah again, and there's always something that can go wrong. Has there been anything this year? Alhamdulillah, from a South African perspective, none. Uh, you know, I think uh, we've been fairly organized, we've been fairly disciplined, uh, and I don't think there's any major issues that have taken place, with the exception of a few illnesses that we've come across. We've had three or four serious uh, admissions. Alhamdulillah, they have been discharged. Uh, there are two of them that we need to facilitate with the hospitals via ambulances for them to be able to fulfill their rituals on the five days. Other than that, Alhamdulillah, I think uh, things have worked out fairly, uh, fairly well for us. Looking back for this Hajj season, um, through everything that has happened from the issuing of the visas or rather from the release of the accreditation list uh, through to the visas and year, would you say that compared to last year, uh, there has been a, a move forward that the SAUK has increased its strike rate uh, with getting things right and making sure that Hujaj are treated uh, in the best possible way? Absolutely. I think that is one of our main focuses is to try and improve year by year. And I think every year we get better, and this year is no different from the last. Yes, like I said, there are challenges, and uh, alhamdulillah, the most important thing is to overcome those challenges. And I think we have been very successful in overcoming them. And yes, I agree that we have improved dramatically, and we can only improve better for the future, inshallah. You're watching a special broadcast from the Azizia studios of ITV, covering Hajj 1435. And uh, we are looking at uh, the special services that are provided uh, by the South African Hajj and Umrah Council for South African Hujaj. If we can move now to Hujaj uh, that are going to be applying for accreditation for uh, the next Hajj, when will that open or, or should, they, should they be watching the website? When can they start doing that? Well, we normally do that sometime towards March and April next year. Uh, depending on what happens after we come back, uh, whether there's going to be a change, I can't tell you, but normally by March, April, we start with the uh, processes because that's the time when we come and sign the protocols. It is important for us to sign the protocols and then release the names because we don't know what the quota is going to be. Although our official quota is 2,500, there has been a reduction of 20% over the last two years. We're hoping that we can get 2,500 next year, but again, it depends on the authorities whether they're going to still maintain that cut of 20%. So once that is sorted out, then only can we release the names for the next Haji or the next season. Hafid, shukran for speaking to us this evening. We pray that the, uh, the, the Almighty Allah uh, is with you over the next few days. It's uh, uh, probably the busiest time for Sauk here as part of the mission to make sure that all the Hujaj move into the different areas. Everything co is coordinated. We make to add that it is an easy task, inshallah, and that it goes off without any niggles and issues, inshallah. Inshallah, shukran, and thanks for having us on to be able to facilitate this particular information. Afwan, it's only our pleasure. You're watching a live broadcast covering Hajj 1435 from the studios of ITV in Makkah Mukarrama. From myself, Samit Mus, until I chat to you later on, uh, we'll be back in a few minutes, inshallah. I hand you back to the studio in Johannesburg. Jazakumullah khairan to our team in Aziziya uh, for covering and t giving us this live feedback from Saudi Arabia, from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah. Indeed, it's very blessed moments to be there and in, in these blessed places and making the Hajj and telling us about the feelings of the Hujjaj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all the Hujjaj and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for those people who didn't get chance to go for Hajj. Uh, that the next year, inshallah, they will be able to go for Hajj. Joining me in the studio, facilitating for the for those people who didn't have chance to go for Hajj. Uh, joining me, Brother Zainul Abidin Kaji from Awqaf, South Africa. Let's welcome Brother Zainul Abidin Kaji. Jazakallah khairan for being with us here in the studio. Brother Zain, uh, if you can tell us about that pledge line which we will be having, inshallah, at half past seven, and uh, what is it all about? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and Jazakallah for having me. Uh, the Okaf South Africa pledge line takes place tonight at 7.30, from 7.30 on, at uh, ITV uh, on channel 347, as everybody knows. Um, the, the, the Hajj pledge or the Hajj uh, Waka fund is essentially uh, an endowment fund that will assist needy hujjaj. Uh, and that can be done in various ways. Uh, we, will, we would like to sponsor poor and needy hujjaj, underprivileged people, 
so our focus is, is really on uh, the poor, underprivileged, and also people in distress. Hmm. Uh, there, there are those that, uh, that can barely afford, they could afford going for Hajj, but then don't have enough for other necessities. Hmm. Uh, food is expensive, uh, medication is expensive, um, and uh, some of these necessities. In fact, I mean, there are workups that, are, that, that provide even for the poor to take back gifts for their families. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 the wakaf as an endowment fund is part of our Islamic culture and Islamic civilization, and it's really very deeply rooted in our Sharia, mm -hmm. uh, in our history. So uh, it's, we, we're also trying to revive this whole spirit of wakaf making, the Sadaqa Jariya, which, which uh, uh, was started by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right back in Medina, Medina Munawara. So we have lots of uh, wakafs throughout the world that, that focus on the poor and the needy, uh, particularly those in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca and Medina. And we hope, inshallah, that uh, in time to come there would be wakafs uh, that, that really support almost every need of the hujjaj. Mm -hmm. Indeed, this is this is something that which is very great uh, cause that uh, we are making the the, the trees or what you can say uh, for the, the resources of the of the of the ummah that they can make Hajj and uh, those people who didn't have chance to go for Hajj they can go through Awqaf South Africa and through the Waqaf Hajj and uh, uh, the, the, our viewers are invited inshallah to take part in that in that pledge line which will be at half past seven uh, spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are invited to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this in this pledge line spending in the path of Allah giving for the for, for the for the waqf hajj so that everybody can go for hajj inshallah and those people who didn't have chance to go for hajj they can go for hajj this is such a, a blessed cause and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prosper and, ble and, and bless this organization all right we'll be crossing to Saudi once again and uh, inshallah we'll come back and we'll continue with you from the ITV studios in Makkah al Mukarramah. Assalamu alaikum and a hearty welcome once again. Joining me now is Majdi and Maryam and we're speaking to Hujaj uh, that are here performing Hajj this year. Majdi and Maryam is from uh, Sunflay in 40. Uh, that is uh, from my neck of the woods, if we can call it that, in, in the Western Cape in Cape Town. Majdi and Maryam, assalamu alaikum and welcome to ITV. Alaikum assalamu alaikum. We're going to start with uh, Majdi and we're going to go through uh, your feeling and your, uh, your response when you found out that you've been accredited to perform Hajj uh, this year? Well, there's no words with it to actually describe it. Uh, when you find out that you've been accredited, Alhamdulillah, you, it's a mixed, mixed, mixed uh, emotions. Mm -hmm. And uh, to actually sitting here today, it's still like a dream. Talking to you, knowing that you're moving tomorrow to Mina, it is, it is incredible. If we, if we can speak to your wife and ask her, um, before we went on air, you say that you have been here, but this time the feeling is totally different. You're here with your life partner, you're here with someone you share most of your time with, your feelings and your... Uh, take us through your emotions when you walked into Mecca for your Umrah um, this time around. So, Mitzvahanullah, I think about 16 years ago, my, my Tawaf Holy Father, the, the last father that I maybe was, and Allah granted me to be here with my husband, and that time I wasn't married. And just, just to have that feelings, but the, the feeling to be here is, is, uh, is indescribable. And the fact that I'm here with my spouse is a blessing, subhanAllah. It's just, it's just a blessing, and the, the words are indescribable. There's no feeling to describe what we've gone through, and, and the fact that we could have uh, blessed and be honored enough to do it together. That is uh, in itself a miracle, and just how everything happened, and how quick it happened, and how Allah opened paths for us. Um, I just want to tell everybody not to ever give up, not to ever give up, SubhanAllah. Majidi, we are we are on the day before everybody moves to Mina, uh, hours away from the Waktu Bukuf. Your feelings and your preparation in a few seconds. Nervous, very nervous. Why nervous? I don't know what to expect. You. You hope everything will go 
as you thought it's going to happen. But uh, inshallah, you know, you put your trust in Allah and see, because uh, this is what we've been waiting for. This is why we're here. Mm. So nervous, excited, mixed, everything. Mariam, a message to those as we wrap up this part of the program, a message to those that are at home that have made intention to come for Hajj? The message for the future Hajj that I would like to give is to say that there is no time that is too soon. No, there's no time that's too long. Prepare yourself, prepare who you go with, prepare what you want to do, prepare, make a list, make things what you want to do because time flies so quickly. Research what you do and research where you're going into and really prepare yourself spiritually because this, the time flies so, so quickly that, um, subhanAllah, I find myself that tomorrow is Mina and I wasn't too well and, but yet, that is just the only place that I want to be, and that is where um, Allah has decreed me to be. No. This, despite so much obstacles, subhanAllah, my family can relate. And I would like to tell everyone in Cape Town, around the world, wherever they are, not to give up. Allah, Allah, Zafuru Rahim. Just say salam to my children at home, and Hamza, my, my mm. baby, my son Mujahid, mm. Amr, my mother, my in laws, brothers, sisters, you know who you are. We make dua for inshallah. And shukran for watching over over our place at home. Inshallah, we we appreciate it very much. We make to Allah that Almighty grant all of us a Hajj Makbul and Mabrur, inshallah, and that those who haven't been here, that Allah grants them also the opportunity. Shukran Amen. for speaking Amen. to us. Shukran. Shukran. Alaykum. Shukran. Broadcasting to you live from Makkah to Mukarama, this is a special program covering Hajj 1435. And until I speak to you later on, I bid you Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, and good evening. Jazakumullah khairan once again to our uh, team in Saudi Arabia in Aziziyah giving us some of the uh, stories of the Hujjaj, some of those people who already went there to Mecca al mukarrama and, uh, and uh, performing this Farida, Farida al-Hajj. And uh, once again, I'm joined by Brother Zain al Abidin Kali still with us and uh, telling us about the pledge line, inshallah, which we will be having at half past seven. Uh, Brother Zain al Abidin, if you can tell our viewers, inshallah, something special uh, in about one minute uh, about this pledge line, inshallah. Well, uh, we are hoping, inshallah, that um, all of you, all the people out there, uh, all the donors out there, you know, what, what is so beautiful about this is that the, the work of that you make uh, contributes in a sustainable way year after year after year. And as Sheikh, you mentioned about the tree, that, that we as Okaf, we are into the, when, when, when people donate money, it's like donating into a tree. And that tree is what, what gives the fruit. So we only use the fruit to be able to carry on our work. And part of our work, every, every donor that contributes to it has a share in all the good deeds that are done. So if we contribute towards a person performing Hajj as Okaf South Africa, effectively it's you, the donor, that is actually contributing towards mm -hmm. it. So we pray that you, your families, your friends, businesses, individuals, families, whoever, join us at 7.30. From 7.30 onwards on the ITV Okaf SA Hajj Pledge Line, Hajj Wakaf Pledge Line. Jazakumullah khairan, Brother Zain al Abidin. Inshallah, our viewers will join us uh, at half past seven for the pledge line, Awqaf, South Africa pledge line for the Hajj Waqaf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of you. Join us, inshallah, at half past seven. Jazakumullah khairan for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This live broadcast was brought to you by. <laughs> This has been an ITV Network's live broadcast. Labaik Allahumma labaik Labaik Allahumma labaik Labaik la sharika laka labaik Inna alhamda wa ni'amata Laka wa al-mulk La sharika laka Labaik Allahumma labaik Labaik Allahumma labaik Labaik la sharika laka labaik Inna alhamda wa ni'amata Laka wa al-mulk La sharika laka 
لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد إن الحمد والنعمة والنعمة لك والملك لك والملك لا شريك لك